In the 20th century, physicists observed the behavior of particles as they went through the double slit experiment, one of the most famous experiments in physics originally performed by Thomas Young. Here's how the double slit experiment works. You first shoot a beam of particles, in this case electrons, and then the beam of electrons would pass through two narrow slits. Then the points where the electrons landed would leave a trace like such, so we know where they landed. You would expect the experiment results to look something like this, because the particles would most likely land right behind the two slits, right? Instead, they looked like this. How in the world did the particles arrive right between the two slits? And what's that weird stripey pattern? Well, if there was one thing physicists knew, it was that it wasn't the first time physicists have seen that stripey pattern. But before we step any further, we first need to go over some things on waves. If we have a wave like such, these parts here are called crests and these are called troughs. If two crests like such meet, then together they form an even bigger crest. The same applies for a trough. A trough plus a trough equals a bigger trough. When a crest and a trough meet, as you would expect, they would cancel each other out, leaving nothing. Now let's try doing the double slit experiment with waves. As the waves pass through the double slit, it creates two separate waves like this. These parts here are crests, and the empty spaces between them are troughs. As the waves continue their journey towards the backboard, they start overlapping. If you look close enough, these points are where two crests overlap creating a bigger crest. These points here are where two troughs meet creating a bigger trough. The combination of a big crest and a big trough create a wave with high amplitude. This is called constructive interference. On the other hand, these points are where a trough and a crest meet creating an empty area. In these regions, the wave is cancelled out leaving no wave at all. This is called destructive interference. Therefore, when a wave passes through a double slit, it leaves a mark like such. Because the waves were extreme in these places and there were no waves in these parts. This is called an interference pattern. Wait a minute. But why didn't an interference pattern show up when the experiment was done with electrons? Physicists said that when the electron gun shoots the electron, it turns into a wave of probability. This means that the electron is not in a certainly defined position. Hence, we cannot say that the particle is here or there. We can only say that the particle is likely to be found in places within the significant crests and trough, and unlikely to be found in places where the wave is cancelled out. So before the electron reaches the detector screen, the electron is essentially in every position it can be at the same time. The electron is here and here and here and so on, all at the same time. In quantum mechanics, we say that the electron is in a quantum superposition, meaning existing in multiple states at once. Quantum superposition states that particles can exist in more than one place or state at once. So the electron's position is spread out among the probability wave, until it reaches the detector screen where it collapses into one of the possibilities in the wave of probability. This is because the act of measuring and observing done by the detector screen collapses the superposition into one single situation among all the different possibilities. And of course, the electron will be more likely to be found in places with an intense wave than where the probability wave is cancelled out. To sum up, the electron chooses one position it wants to be from all the other possible states in the probability wave. This eventually led to a conclusion that matter behaves like particles and also like waves, hence creating the wave-particle duality, one of the first revolutionary ideas of quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics is the weirdest theory we humans have ever encountered. Even scientists today are bothered by the fact that particles behave like waves and that they can be at multiple places simultaneously, and so on. In fact, this is only the beginning of quantum mechanics' strangeness. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, Schrodinger's cat, wave functions, black body radiation, quantum entanglement, the list never ends. It's truly groundbreaking that the universe works so differently and unexpectedly in the subatomic level. I still remember that night when I first read about the wave-particle duality, and I could not get it out of my mind for days. I think it's really incredible how quantum mechanics manages to defy everyone's intuition. After thinking about quantum mechanics, I start to realize just how amazing science and the universe really is. It's just mind-blowing how the universe always has big surprises up its sleeve. And yet, we don't notice any of this quantum weirdness in our daily lives, which almost makes you question reality itself. And I think that's the real beauty of quantum mechanics. The fact that it leaves us with tons of unanswered questions that we can't seem to conclude with. As Richard Feynman said, I'd rather have questions that can't be answered than answers that can be questioned.